Macbeth, Act 2, Scene 1, I am in. Enter Banquo and Fleece with a torch before him. Banquo says, How goes the night, boy? How, actually, is the question? Fleance says the moon is down, but I don't think he listened to Banquo, or else he would talk about how. But he says the moon is down. So, and then he says, I have not heard the clock. I think instead of saying that the moon was down to show that Fleance was listening, he should have replied to how goes the night, boy? How else should it go? And then the moon is down. But Fleance didn't take that opportunity. So saying that the moon is down, down is what I think Banquo should reply to. And Banquo says, and she goes down at 12. She does reply to the down, but it's too late. It comes too late in the sentence, and he starts it off with an and. So, and she goes down at 12. And in fact, she, he, he talks about she, she is the moon, but and is actually now the opportunity for Fleance to take into mind to reply to Banquo. So Fleance says, I take it. Tis later, sir. He didn't reply to the and. In fact, he, should, he could have said to and she goes down at 12, and so it is, I take it, tis later, sir. But, or he could have said, and she goes down at 12, and take it, I, or something kind of like that, but he doesn't take that opportunity, actually. So saying that, I take it, tis later, sir, Banco has the opportunity, if he's really listening, to respond to Fleance's word take. And you know what? He actually does. Banquo says, hold, take my sword. He could have said, without the hold, take my sword, and it would have worked out even better. Or take my sword, hold. But usually holds, I think that would that's acceptable. It's close enough to show that Banquo was listening to Fleance. There's husbandry in heaven, their candles are all out. Take thee that to a heavy, heavy summons lies le like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. And Macbeth enters, enter Macbeth and a servant with a torch. Give me my sword, says Banquo. Who's there? And I believe Macbeth should have said something in response to the give me my sword, uh, the word give. So he could have said, maybe giving is not necessary since I'm a friend. But instead, Macbeth says, I'm... Uh, he, he responds, a friend, to Banquo's asking, Who, who's there? So he really wasn't listening completely. Give me my sword, of course, was the command for Fleance to give the sword to Banquo. But if since Macbeth heard that, because that was right at the point where Macbeth entered, Macbeth could have said, giving's not necessary, I'm a friend, but instead he just says, a friend. Then I think if Banquo was listening to Macbeth, he would have responded like this, kind of. Friendly you are, or a friend I do see before me. I'm not trying to change Shakespeare's words because he's, he's the best. I'm saying that if Banquo was listening to Macbeth, 
Shakespeare wrote it as these characters not listening to each other completely, except in that one part uh, earlier where Fleon says, I take it to Banquo, or to Banquo's, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Um, Banquo says, hold, take my sword to Fleon, says I take it. So that part was close to listening. When, when Macbeth says a friend, friend is the word I think that Banquo should pick up on if he's really listening well. But instead of saying a friend thou art, Banquo says, what, sir, stir not yet at rest? The king's abed, he hath been in usual, unusual pleasure, and sent forth great largeness to our offices. This diamond he greets your wife withal, by the name of most kind hostess, and shut up in measureless content. He didn't say, friends thou art. He says, what, sir, not yet at rest. So, based off of that passage, I think Macbeth should have picked up on not yet at rest, what, sir, not yet at rest, meaning you sleep is not come to you yet, or rest hasn't come to you yet, or why are you moving around? This is what Macbeth says. Being unprepared, our will became the servant to defect, which else should free have wrought. Macbeth didn't even answer his question. So Shakespeare's writing here that they're not listening to each other, which is always, I think, important. But they do listen to themselves speak, is what Carol Bloom, uh, uh, they listen not to each other, but Harold Bloom says they listen to each, they listen to themselves speaking. Macbeth said, our will became the servant to defect. I think that will will be the, the clue to what Banquo, I think, should respond to. But instead of will, our will became the servant to defect. That's actually the subject matter, but Banquo's not going to pick up on that. He, he goes straight to himself. He's, he says, I dreamt last night of the three wayward sisters. To you, they have shown some truth. Now, since Banquo didn't talk about Will, I'm not going to try to surmise what he might have asked in re or he might have said in reply, but I do want to go into why why I think dreamt and show some, showed some truth, which is the dream showed some truth that he had. That Banquo dreamt is what Macbeth should pick up on. He should say something like, dreaming is just a matter of whether or not certain things happen that if they, the dream is true, you can only find out after the dream is true, not during the dream. So prophecy wouldn't work. That's kind of the long answer, but what this is what Macbeth says. I think not of them. He's talking about the Wayard sisters, the weird sisters, the witches. He's not thinking about the dream so much as the, sis the weird sisters. I think not of them. Yet when we can entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in it some words upon that business if you would grant the time. Well, Macbeth could have said what I said, maybe something about the dream, but instead he talks about the weird sisters. So, now that Macbeth said what he just said, the word think is, as in terms of thinking not, but Thinking and thinking not are actually almost the same because the diction reveals think as the subject matter. Even though there's that not, it's still part of the subject matter even though he is thinking not. That's the subject matter. I, I believe that Banquo should have picked up on. And Banquo says, at your kindest leisure. So he's not really listening to the part where he's saying, I think not. He could have said, well, thinking is, thinking not of the weird sisters It actually is a good idea because dreams can be 
bad if they don't turn out true. But instead he says, at your kindest leisure, to grant, and to, to Macbeth saying, I, you would grant the time. Anyways, I think that this is the part where Macbeth actually listens to Banquo. Since Banquo just said, at your kindest leisure, Macbeth says, if you shall cleave to my consent, when tis, it shall make honor for you. So he's taking that word your, which I think is the subject matter, be, meaning Macbeth, and then using the word from your, you, if you shall cleave to my consent, when tis, it shall make honor for you. So there's a few yous in there. So I believe that Macbeth was actually picked up on listening to Banquo. And then Banquo says, So I lose none in seeking to augment it, but still keep my bosom franchised and allegiance clear. I shall be counseled. I believe that the Banquo, when he says, So I lose none in seeking to arg augment it, no, losing no honor here, pretty much. Lose is the subject matter I think that Macbeth should pick up on, but he doesn't. He says, good repose the while. He could have said something like, Le losing is a terrible thing to have happen if it's with honor, but instead Macbeth, because of the economy of this book, things are moving quickly. It's almost as if they don't even listen to each other because they'd rather rush to their end. Macbeth says, good repose the while. Repose, I believe, is now the subject matter that Banquo should pick up on, but does he? No. He says, thanks, sir, the like to you. You, actually, is what... Actually, he's really the thanking, I thank you, or thank thankfully sir the like and thanks and the like to you the repose yes he's being polite in one way but he's not commenting on the repose which could further the conversation next macbeth says go bid thy mistress when my drink is ready she strike upon the bell get thee to bed so he he leaves with the servant he could have said something about strike upon the bell actually the striking like Striking is too is so loud, or something like that. Even though that's not really, you know, necessary. He could have mentioned something like that. Strike uh, to hit the bell. Anyways, is this a dagger, which I see before me, the handle toward my hand? So now he's talking to himself. And dagger is the subject matter. So if he's asking the question about the dagger. It's funny because instead of say, staying with the dagger as the subject matter, he turns it into a direct object. He says, come, let me clutch thee. Let me clutch the dagger. Come. Come means is almost the coming is the subject matter here. Come. He's talking to the dagger, not talking about the dagger. So he's somewhat listening to himself, but... Since it's still the direct object, I'll give him credit for still listening to himself a little bit. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? So that's another question which, when he answers it, actually he listened to himself. And I'm going to stop after this. Fatal vision is the subject matter, and then he he goes on, or art thou but a dagger of the mind? So the fatal vision goes with a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain. So the dagger of the mind is the is the connection between the, the thoughts on the dagger, which are the fatal vision, the next being the dagger of the mind, and after that he says, I see thee yet. So the dagger of the mind he could have picked up on but he says, I see thee yet. So he's not talking about what's in his mind, but of him at this point. So that's where he stopped listening to himself. But he listened to himself just for a little bit.